Hello, everyone. In June, the Canadian government passed a new law addressing medical assistance in dying. It will take time to understand the full impact of this legislation. But in the meantime, there are lessons to be learned from Quebec, the one province that legalized assisted dying ahead of the rest of the country. During the same week that the federal bill on assisted dying was bouncing around on Parliament Hill before becoming law, I had the opportunity to hear a very interesting presentation at a meeting of the Federation of Medical Regulatory Authorities of Canada in Banff, Alberta. Dr. Alain No, a family physician in Quebec City with enhanced skills in palliative care, gave a talk on his personal experience in providing medical assistance in dying. Today, I want to share with you some of the insights he gained from his experiences as a bit of food for thought. His talk provided a profoundly human picture of the experience, both for the provider and the patient. Dr. No walked us through his process, which includes meeting with the patient and the patient's family, looking after the drugs, planning the date and time of the procedure. This also involves confirming the patient's wishes, administering the medications, allowing a period of time afterwards to speak with the family, and completing the death certificate. Dr. No indicated that in most cases, the time period between the patient's request and the completion of the process was 48 hours. I asked him about his journey as a palliative care physician and adding medical aid in dying to his work. He simply indicated he felt he was at the service of his patients and he had not found the inclusion of assisted dying in his scope of practice as difficult as one might expect if you think about this in the context of service, service to your patients, service to a specific community. At the conference, Dr. Yves Robert, Secretary of the Collège de Médecins du Québec, also spoke of the differences in approach to the debate between Quebec and the rest of the country. In Quebec, the debate was driven by the licensing authority on behalf of the Quebec public and its physicians. It was all about the logic of care. In the rest of Canada, the context was driven by the Supreme Court ruling and the logic of rights was at play. Another point Dr. No raised had to do with conscientious objection. He indicated that, to his knowledge, this has not been a big issue in Quebec. Physicians who have conscientious objection have clear direction and obligations regarding referral of a patient requesting assistance in dying, and they must refer. It is not a choice. A concern Dr. No pointed to in the federal law was the waiting period of at least 10 days that was eventually included. This is intended as a cooling off period between requesting assisted death and undergoing the procedure. He was concerned because he had witnessed patients who were scheduled for medical aid in dying who refused to take symptom relief medication out of fear they would not be compass mentis to be able to reaffirm their wish to die immediately before the procedure as required. He worried that patients would suffer needlessly because of this. Although the 10-day waiting period is not part of the Quebec legislation, it is part of the federal legislation and of the criminal code. Quebec physicians have been informed of this aspect of the federal law by way of a directive from the Quebec Ministry of Health, but the pre-existing legislation in the province remains in force. This creates a difficult situation for our colleagues in Quebec. Let us hope this gets clarified further and that with time, the lessons learned in the implementation of this legislation in practice will allow the law to evolve to best serve our patients. When I think about medical aid in dying, I realize on one hand that we end up compartmentalizing it because of its legal and ethical ramifications. But Dr. No's presentation reminded me that regardless of how we may feel regarding our involvement in the act, we must view it in the context of caring for patients at the end of their lives and aim to approach it in a manner that is as competent, caring, and compassionate as possible. If you have thoughts to share on this or any other issue, please take a moment to leave a comment here, on Twitter, or by email. Until the next time, take good care.